here, so I'm going to stick to it. Um, I was also, uh, I, I ran the Australian Office of, uh, of A Thousand Hits, which is a sister organisation to uh, We Are Social. Um, so I've been, I've been the most, rele re most reluctant marketer in existence. <laughs> Um, I, I never really, I got into social media from a research perspective, much like Jenny, uh, and then I ended up, you know, I, I call myself a recovering academic uh, because of the fact that I've, I've got out of the industry but I keep getting dragged back. Uh, but, uh, uh, so I ended up in industry doing social media and doing social media management and, and dealing with all sorts of customers from Optus to Nando's. So uh, I do know a little bit about what's been going on in the sphere. Uh, I'm not trying to be rude necessarily, but I am going to say quite honestly that a lot of social media influence is a lot of crap. <laughs> All right, so um, there's a, this is why influence is effectively a massive scam, is my subtitle for, from this particular uh, process. What makes an influencer? Well, um, usually it's about followers, uh, in spite of the fact that influence in the real world has very little to do with how many people follow you. Uh, your influence in a family circle, your influence in a, in a community group uh, will be based on what kind of contribution you make to those particular societies. In an influencer-driven environment on social media, it is purely a numbers play and rarely has anything to do with expertise and often is a complete scam in the way they get those followers in the first place. By the way, my, my business partner um, in Constructors Handbook is a guy called Gavin Heaton. The man has 50,000 Twitter followers. Uh, and he did that mostly by following everyone back who followed him. So um, one of the greatest, greatest things that I distinguish myself from my business partner is that I think I've got about 5,000 followers but I only follow about a thousand of them. <laughs> so they're usually defined as people with the ability to influence potential buyers of a product or service. They generate buzz among their audiences. But uh, why is influencers, uh, why are influencers problematic? Well, they are big fish in small ponds. And unfortunately, um, social media channels naturally create these societies of people who think alike. And much like Jenny's research, actually fascinating research, really in, uh, enjoyed that presentation uh, where the students were investigating their own communities. Um, if you can do the same thing with colours and with pregnancy and things like that, you can do that with politics. It's really easy. All you have to do is start making sort of slightly um, slightly hate speech oriented posts on Facebook and suddenly you'll find that the policies and the politics advertisements and content from other people in your network will change dramatically. Even people that you think are your friends will suddenly seem to come from the opposite side of the political spectrum from the way that they did before. It's really easy to actually make that happen and it's frightening to watch it happen too. Uh, so in an, inf in an echo chamber, influence is often the loudest voiced or the most consistent contributor rather than anyone who has anything useful to say. It is very easy to become an influencer simply by posting all the time. A colleague of mine, who shall remain nameless because this is slightly defamatory, um, uh, decided that he was going to become a LinkedIn influencer. All right. <laughs> So what he does is he shares other people's posts without attribution on a regular basis and he does this probably every 10 to 15 minutes a day and all day and all night. This man is now a LinkedIn influencer. LinkedIn has awarded him the LinkedIn influencer little badge. Yay for him. Has he monetized it? No, of course he hasn't. It's a waste of time. Um, but uh, he thinks it was useful. So I'm going to share just three myths, and there are a lot of myths about social media influence, right? Here's number one. Influencers create sales. <coughs> no, they don't. Rubbish. They do not. They might drive traffic. They might express interest to purchase. People might express interest to purchase. But anybody who's done business education knows one thing. 
there's a correlation between uh, in, intention, uh, between awareness and intention to purchase, and there's a correlation between intention to purchase and sales. There is no correlation between awareness and sales. This is about awareness, not sales. Influences create awareness. They don't actually generate sales. So there's always been a, a misalignment. Um, I love this case study from last week. Perfect timing. Last week, this Instagram influencer with 2 million followers failed to sell 36 t-shirts. She decided she was going to actually start up her own brand in t-shirts and she needed to sell just 36 of them in order to be able to extend her sales channel. She didn't manage to sell 36 t-shirts right, from 2 million followers. I mean, if, if this is, this is, and this is a, a common thread now that is actually coming up. All these influencers have been bought out by large brands because people like me who used to run a social media agency said, oh, you need to use the influencers because they're the ones who will actually buy your product if you use them. No, they won't. They never have. Um, that's what's terrifying about this is that the bubble is set to burst, really, on, uh, on social media influence as a rule. What about, well, it's okay, so that's the bad news story. What about when influence converts? When, when does using an influencer, when is it really useful? Well, um, they are really good at driving awareness and interest around new ideas. That if you've already got an audience for your product, you know, PwC is a classic thing, you've already got a, a, a market for something, and you wanted to add something new, like your like your campaign on, um, on the, the homelessness campaign. So you've already got an audience, so what you do is you use influencers to engage the audience around <coughs> something like homelessness and bring it back in to the PwC community. That's where it's actually kind of useful. It's about connecting communities or connecting different ideas. And that's, that's kind of this what they call this micro-influencer category experts idea where you've got um, people who will consider a brand and they will say, yeah, look, this has value and I, 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 I see the connections between these entities and that's actually kind of a useful kind of process. Um, the, the, so the awareness, interest, desire, action, the AIDA purchasing funnel, um, it, the influence is kind of good at the awareness to interest phase rather than the, the interest to desire, desire to action phase, if you like. Um, Next myth. Influencers are trusted authorities. This is something every time I read a read a you know a, a business blog post about what influencers are good for, they say, oh, they're trusted authorities. No, they're not. Not all the time. Some of them are very mad people indeed. Like my, my colleague, the uh, the LinkedIn influencer. Um, they can spread total fabrications simply to raise their their um, their influence ratings. Um, this is a classic case here with an Instagram star. So, so Instagram, Instagram stars are posting fake sponsored content, right? So they are pretending that there are more sponsors out there supporting their content than there in fact are. So they're using fakes. This is insane, right? They're actually putting on their own channels kind of marketing content for brands because then that makes them look cooler. Yeah, no. That actually drives up their price uh, for other people who are going to sponsor their content. But it's not actually a real indication of how useful they are as spokespeople on any particular subject, which is, uh, again, you know, we, we've got to be, we've got to do what, what Jenny's been saying, unblock black box things, really investigate what really is going on here. Um, so, and then there's the possibility that uh, influence itself can become a liability. So, if you become a subject matter expert on one particular subject, if you have stuff other than that subject to share, audiences are less likely to take you seriously on those secondary subjects. And that can be a problem if you move from one job to another. Because if you were only known 
for your influence in the area associated with your previous job then actually trying to get some of that authority back in your new job is particularly difficult. So uh, influence itself can become a liability. So um, uh, if you're, if you're, uh, you're considering the trusted authority um, with, with number two, um, then you can lose your, your, your place in the market. But myth number three is my favourite because influences are good value or cost effective. Well, compared with what? Um, yes, so right, it's easy, as, as, as the girls were saying earlier, that the low-hanging fruit of social media was considered to be cheap. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the oldest people in this room right now. Uh, and I remember a time when getting, a, getting a, an ad in a, a newspaper was profoundly expensive. I knew when getting an ad on TV was tens of thousands of dollars per second. Now, it's all really cheap because we've got so many channels. We've got subscription television. We've got, uh, we've got a free-to-wear television. We've got digital radio as well as podcasts, we've got, um, uh, we've got online channels, we've got an uh, increasingly uh, diverse set of content that we are engaging with, none of which uh, we, uh, has absolute control over who sees advertisements. In almost in every format that we look at, we can block advertisements if we choose, if we're, uh, if we're industrious enough. In our, in our engagement with content online. So therefore, what is actually happening is that we are losing the state of uh, being able to have value in an audience. And that means that the cost of any kind of advertisements or any kind of engagement has plummeted. Um, the reason why there are so many jobs, losses in the advertising sector and in the media sector is because there simply hasn't been the income from advertising to be able to support the number of people, the number of heads who are working in media firms. Um, and so the cost of, um, of advertising in traditional media has gone down where actually the cost of influences on social media has gone up. Therefore, the value, the cost benefit of using influences is now almost exactly the same as being on television advertisements. Interestingly enough, there have been, I'm, I've, I know this myself, and one of my former employees is sitting in the audience, which is hilarious, uh, it's just ripped up. Um, but I know this myself, that I was spending uh, a fortune at um, my word of mouth marketing agency, a thousand heads, on influencers <coughs> for writing posts for brands. Uh, mummy bloggers and, mummy bloggers and um, foodie critics, foodie bloggers, were some of the most expensive. Many food bloggers and mummy bloggers were asking $10,000 for a post. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so, and that's one post. You know, just promoting a brand. And saying, oh, I've been using these lipsticks, or I've been using this kind of, you know, I've been eating these sauces. So um, it's an extraordinary situation that, uh, that we've actually got to a stage where social media is no longer the cheap social. In fact, it's um, uh, a pretty expensive thing. And as these guys will tell you, you are working all the time, day and night, 24-7, immediate response to uh, bad press or bad publicity. So it really ends up being a high cost um, of, uh, of, um, of sponsored content. I love this particular, this is from February this year, this um, hobo with a laptop, um, it's, the, it's the card, it's the rate card for sponsored content uh, on, a, uh, on a site. Um, there are people who are averaging for 50,000 followers with a, with, a, with a domain authority, that's a web, website authority of 45 or up. But there, for 50,000 followers, you're getting between 4,200 and 5,500 per post on your site. Now, hilariously, I did a DA um, uh, check on my own domain when I was putting these slides together, and my domain authority came in as 34. I haven't blogged in two years on my website at joannejacobs.net. 
and yet I still managed to get effectively, and, and according to my, it's, as my business partner said, it's probably bots <coughs> visiting my site, but I was getting 30,000, I was getting 30,000 hits a month on my site, so I was actually, I should be at, um, ch charging between three and 4,000 for someone to come and put in a, 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 a post on my site. Kind of, kind of tempted to do it now. Uh, <laughs> so, just I want to leave with a few, three, three tiny little uh, statements. Influencers do tend to know their audience. They do tend to, those who are fully engaged, those who are genuine influencers, rather than those who are just looking at increasing the ratings. Uh, they do tend to know their audiences. Um, those that are, are most celebrity obsessed within their little communities, um, they do get to know them, know their audiences rather well, and they want to be the, uh, the, um, the boss. Influencers do drive, re drive leads in some respects. They're great at awareness ra raising. They don't just necessarily convert those leads, which is a different thing, right? Uh, and influencers improve brand SEO. Again, mostly, you know, it depends on the channel. Um, uh, interestingly enough, LinkedIn, if you've got a, a link if you, in your posts on LinkedIn, if you link to an outside site and not to another post inside of LinkedIn, the post value that LinkedIn pays to it goes down. They don't want you leaving LinkedIn. So the, the best thing to do is if you wanted to put a post is to actually then put it as a post on LinkedIn somewhere else as a longer blog post and then have a link to an article from there. There are tricks. <laughs> so, but, uh, you, you know, they don't like, they don't like to uh, lose you from their channel links to, where, where links impact their own ratings. Um, but finally, uh, being a big fish doesn't make you beautiful. Uh, if you want to be an influencer, sometimes it can get rather ugly. Uh, so uh, I would encourage you, rather than following the normal path of social media, just to drive an audience, try to be a bit more authentic and a bit real. Thank you. That's me.